Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of In The Comments. Today's topic is really, I guess, knowing what you're talking about. Um, so the first one that I would like to get into is from YouTube actually, and it's from Wade Garrett. Wade Garrett was responding to the video that I did about Balenciaga culturally appropriating our stuff, particularly the sagging pants, but I came to know after doing that video that they had appropriated some print from Ghana. And the question was, is where are the Negroes that work for you? And um, why do y'all keep taking our stuff? Wait a minute, who are you? I asked where the black people are that work for you because they let you put stuff like this out. But also <laughs> we have to know that they're not present in the designing room because they wouldn't let y'all come up with these not attractive designs. <laughs> Wade Garrett says, I'm sure back in the day, white skater boys used to dress like that too. I'm certain black people didn't have a monopoly on wearing jeans around their knees. I'm just gonna stop there for a second. There's one more sentence in that where he tries to be funny. But I'm gonna stop right there because you're low-key contradicting yourself with that. We're talking about the fashion statement of sagging, like where it came from, where it originated from. The white skater boys might've adopted this style of dress Number one, it did not come from them. Number one, it was not like a skater kids and kids from the hood or whatever adopted this clothing trend at the same time. No, black communities had it first, but also you said around their kneecaps. Skaters are likely not wearing pants and correct me if I'm wrong because I don't skate, but they're not gonna wear pants around their kneecaps because then they can't skate. But then you went to go say something else. You could have probably tried to leave your comment there. Then you said, while we're on the subject of cultural appropriation, drinking tea like you are is not a part of black culture. So aren't you culturally appropriating? Put in, put in herbs and water and drinking it? Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Sir, that is one of the most indigenous things known to homo sapiens. Everybody has done that. In West African culture, it is very common for children and adults to drink tea on a daily basis. Now, is that a product of colonial influence? How tea has become a part of their culture? I can't say for sure, but I would be stupid to say that it's not. However, like Moors are known for creating very specific concoctions of teas for medicinal purposes. Ancient African nations had their own different types of herbs and mixes that will be steeped in hot water to bring out its nutrients uh, for rituals and ceremonies. So like, Bro, you don't know what you're talking about. All right, so this person was on Instagram and I actually had a bit of a conversation with them because I was a little confused as it came at me a little crazy. And the thing about me is, is I usually don't engage in arguments, but if someone, if I feel like someone is bringing me information that I'm generally not aware of, I'll inquire about it. Um, I'll ask for respect. I'm not usually disrespectful unless someone is just outlandishly disrespectful. But uh, yeah, folks be coming for me. My name come up respected. Yo, stop playing with my f Thug Dot Lawrence. Since when was sagging to show off designer boxers and large belt buckles? That's throwing me all the way off. Been following you for a minute, but you can't be doing real research if that's what you came up with. Anyway, so I respond to this girl. I said question mark number one, because like why why is it so strong? And I also like I mentioned jail culture. I figured that's what she was alluding to. I mentioned jail culture in the video, but I didn't get so in depth into how sagging was related to jail culture because that wasn't the purpose of the video number one and I have some thoughts about that which I'll explain in a second. I said for many the purpose many in quotes because I'm not saying all you don't you shouldn't use totalizing statements anyway because you shouldn't generalize groups of people. The purpose of the fashion statement was to show off their designer accessories. If you have more to offer <laughs> she says you're right definitely not trying to discredit you. I still follow you but it seems like a blatant disregard for the actual history. This is when my ears begin to perk up. Stats will show that 95% of the sagging is not to show off designer underwear and or large belt buckles, but go off on Balenciaga and maybe include something about how appropriating prison culture is not cool too. Y'all have to stop using the word stats when you haven't done the research. People like to say stats because it incurs the thoughts of numbers and substantiated numbers, bona fide numbers, when in fact people are just kind of thinking about what they think to be common without proper context to even make those kind of conclusions. And a number like 95% is very strong. It's, it's difficult to say that 95% when 95% of black men aren't in jail. So we can't assume that 95% of them were wearing their pants sagging low to emulate jail culture. Now in lower income areas, definitely 
there is some type of romanticization. There is a romanticizing of people who leave the hood or get caught up for this gangster life or thug life, whatever, what have you. I mentioned like the homophobia surrounding jail culture because there's a lot of black men who end up in jail and end up seeking companionship um, sexually. You really just have to stop like stigmatizing those who choose to seek out love and have consensual sex. Like, okay? in no way am I trying to soften anyone's perspective on prison rape because prison rape can be very traumatic. Rape is traumatic for anyone who experiences it. There is an additional ego death for black men who experience prison rape because of all the pressures of society that surround their idea of masculinity. The, the whole sagging pants thing, that was another type of signal used, like sagging pants showing that you are you are open to consensual sex. But like really the history behind it, when black men were first put in jails and given these uniforms, these prison systems, these guards, whatever did not have enough respect for these people did not want to give them the dignity of having clothes that fit them that's legitimately how these things started so you know i definitely get we don't want our kids emulating jail culture because that is how society looks at our children it is so closely associated with criminality so i get it i just really need for us to rethink the side of it that has to do with sexuality moving along but this person, Ely the Sun, says, I would love to see a debate between you and real Candace Owens. And I get this comment a lot, so again, I didn't think twice about it. But then she said, two smart women debating will always be entertaining and educational. And she said, two smart women, and I ain't gonna do that. Because the thing about it is, Candace Owens is like very smart. She's very strategic, she's done what she's needed to do to get herself where she needs to be and she knows how to stay there. So she's not stupid, she's not stupid in the slightest. But I think a lot of people who will wanna see me debate Candace Owens and that's probably not something I'm ever gonna do. Not because I would be afraid to have the conversation but I know Candace Owens doesn't want to have conversation. She wants to have debate. And you know, my boy, um, my boy consciously, like he does that, he has the energy for it, for all of these people on TikTok and the Instagrams and wherever he'll have debates with. That's just not my style but also because I see past the things Candace Owens says versus what Candace Owens symbolizes, what she does. Um, and so, you know, she likes to try to debate fact. I just did a video last week about Larry Elder and when I was doing research on him, I saw that of course, he was on Candace's podcast and I wouldn't be surprised if she was on his podcast at some point in time on his radio show. People like Candace Owens and Larry Elder, they don't really, they're not interested in facts. They're interested in rhetoric that they can uphold that will make them, that will further strengthen and solidify their place in white spaces and white racist um, Republican spaces. And so they, they're speaking, they're speaking incendiary narratives to increase support from Proud Boys, people they think are stupid, increase support from the alt-right people they think are delirious, but like are giving them money for what they, are producing. I'm not interested in debating what's fact and what's not, and I feel like that's where it's gonna get, because I've seen her do what she does. But like my questions are what literally just lead, lead into like, you know, why are you doing this? What are you doing it for? How does it serve you? And like, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are many ways that it does serve her. She's willfully and intentionally allowing herself to be placed in this light as this figurehead, as this pawn, to propagate all of these lies about black people and because it's coming from this intelligent black woman's mouth people believe it and you know i just i, I have no respect for that and i can't hold space with somebody like that the last thing i want to talk to y'all about is i tried to get my girl t.s madison to join me for this week's segment but she's super booked and busy because of course she is she posted some comments the other day and i was like girl will you come on so we can talk about this because it's straight foolishness and i feel like y'all know what i'm finna say this whole normani and tiana taylor situation when just a few weeks ago they was talking about lil nas and all his shenanigans on the stage when they were scissoring on the stage Queenin underscore 100. She says, women are smarter than men. Girls are smarter than boys. A young girl will see this and may not think twice. She'll grow up and a man will still find her and love her. A boy seeing two men too early will confuse their simple little minds. <laughs> and they will then they gonna grow up not knowing what the fuck they want or who. Girl, what? <laughs> 
so your 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 response is just that women are smarter than men and women are smart enough not to let imagery affect their sexuality girl stop because it's not about the kids it's not about the kids you guys like there's so many videos on youtube of kids talking to non-binary people of kids talking to gay people trans people and like kids are just like oh okay cool like it's very simple and plain to explain to a child their brains are at their highest like ability of learning and absorbing information it only becomes difficult for you because you spent 30 plus years with this single one track minded idea about how sexuality works when it's just not the truth and so someone like Lil Nas X you know I really support what he's doing, changing the narratives, he's shining lights for people, he's giving voice, he's giving visibility because there are a lot of young kids who don't feel like they can talk to their parents because of things they say like this on the internet. There are parents who are snipping at their kids who show any hint that threatens masculinity and that goes both ways. A lot of parents don't like to see their young men doing feminine things and that's why they don't like to see their young daughters doing masculine things because for a woman to encroach upon manhood is disrespectful or it's unnatural. It's too much. I, this is too much for one episode. We'll bring those comments back for next week's episode when I invite the Conscious League to come speak with us. So y'all, thank you so much for coming on this week's episode of In The Comments. I'll see you next week. Are there any comments on the internet that you've seen that you're just like, man, I wish Lanizzi would comment on this? Send them to me in my DMs. Do me a favor. Screenshot the comments if you come across them. Screenshot comments on the rest of Beyonce's internet. Or you think someone has a really problematic point of view on anything, send it to me in the DMs. Send the picture first and then follow it up with hashtag ITC. When you hashtag ITC, you are letting me know that you are submitting one of your comments for review on in the comments by me, myself, and I, or between me and whatever guests I may invite. One more thing before you go. Today, you only saw snippets of this conversation or me talking about these comments, rather. If you would like to see the full video, please click the link in my description to subscribe to the Facebook. There you will get exclusive content like this full length video. You will get early bird passwords to merch drops, special discounts, and special products. See y'all next week. Thank you for your time.